welcome or welcome back to Nat Snook. From the title of the video, you already know what is finna go down, okay? I have been waiting for this one. Turn it up, I <laughs> know. No, but seriously, I and like a, a number of other people all across the world has been waiting for this moment. We've been waiting 12 plus years for this and we got it in the time of all hell breaking loose. We got it. We got it. We got it. I got it. I read it and now I'm here to do a review. Before I even get into like really what the video is about, I want to make a statement about the Quileute tribe. They are trying to move their community to higher and more, much more safer grounds because, you know, natural disasters happen and those can be some really suffering times for um, groups of people. So, in order to, you know, prevent, you know, any more damage happening to their community and to their people, they are asking that any and everyone donate to their website that I'm going to link in the description below. I have done my part and of course donated. A lot of people were saying that, you know, match the price of, uh, the price you paid for the book for your donation to, to the Quilly Tribe and I matched my price plus some. So yes, I would appreciate that everyone who bought Midnight Sun or, you know, has read a Twilight book or is a part of the Twilight fandom to donate, okay? To help the people that inspired this saga. Like, that's the least that we could do, you know? If you bought Midnight Sun, then I'm sure you have enough coin to do some donating. That's it, that's all. So not only am I going to do a review on Midnight Sun, I am also going to do the really, really old... <laughs> I think it might be like nine plus years old twilight tag uh on here i was curious to know if there was even such a tag and come to find out it is and honestly if i had known that there was a tag like this i would have created my booktube channel a long time ago i would probably be much more to the community if i had started it then who knows though who knows but anyway I'm not sure who the original uh, creator of the tag questions is, and I'm sorry about that, but I will be doing the Twilight tag on here. You know, something, something ain't right here. Uh, hmm. Okay, I don't, I don't know. I don't, ah. Mm-hmm. How about this? All right, now let's see what this, you know, big, beautiful, thick book is all about, okay? Sorry for the glare. Like, they gave us glossy covers, and honestly, I'm not, I'm not a fan of glossy covers, especially when it comes to the book being hardcover. Like, I am not a fan of hardcover books. I will continue to say this. I am jealous to anyone who has Midnight Sun in paperback form. You are the bane of my existence because that should be me, but it's not. This is what Midnight Sun looks like. This is the, the, the front with the fruit on the front. And then the, this is the back with, you know, a little excerpt from the book. And then the covers of all of the other books in the saga. So, yes. Um... I did some annotating. I didn't do a whole lot of annotating because it was my first read and typically I don't annotate books when I do a first read um, unless it's a piece of nonfiction. I will underline, highlight, sticky note, all that <laughs> um, in my books. But with fiction, I, I don't annotate really. I annotated um, the very first, the very first, <laughs> I annotated the very first Twilight book, Twilight, when I reread it uh, back there in July. I think it was like the last week in July, I reread Twilight so that I could prepare for Midnight Sun. 
of course um and that's what i did and i just found i found myself like underlining some parts highlighting some parts parts that i was like ooh, i forgot that was in there that's hot and then other parts where i was like why is this in here that's a no stop mm -mm. cut it out stephanie cut it out but yeah i was supposed to do like a whole compare and contrast of twilight and midnight sun but i'm not gonna do that because i'm pretty sure a lot of other booktubers are doing that and i'm not gonna do it because that would require me to sit and record this video much longer than it has to be and i'm not gonna do that to you all no so let me just get into this all right um first four star rating i gave it a four star rating on goodreads i think i gave after i reread twilight i think i gave twilight a four star rating too so it's a reoccurring thing anyway i noticed while i was reading that well first before i even get into that when i first started reading i read like the first two chapters like on my own and it was hard i was really trying to push through it i don't know if it was because it was like literally the same story being told or like i just was not interested in some of the stuff that edward had to say or do in the very beginning <laughs> but i was struggling and I was like, I need to find an audiobook because I know this book can be 10 times more interesting and I can get through it much quicker if I had another media. So, physical book plus the audiobook. And let me tell you, the narrator did an exceptional job, okay, with giving us this, this Edward character. All right, and I will listen to it again just to hear his voice. <laughs> So yes, that's the only, really the only way I was able to get through this book is the audiobook. Do you see how thick she is? It took me a week. It took me a week to read this. 658 pages. Read and done. Okay. I thought this was the longest book that I've read, but it's not. I tweeted about this, you know. I was like, fun fact, Midnight Sun would be the second longest book that I've ever read, like ever in my 22 years of existence. Breaking Dawn was the first book I, was the first longest book that I've ever read and honestly i am shocked i am amazed at how i was able to read almost 800 pages of a book like but i think it took me like two to three weeks to read breaking dawn though so i i give myself credit for reading this in a week to be honest i just want to talk about some stuff that i noticed i don't know if it's because the audiobook helped me like just like nitpick at this stuff but yeah one thing I noticed is there were a few typos I I remember those same typos being in the manuscript that got leaked 12 years ago so I don't know if she just decided to like continue writing from where she left off and didn't think to revisit what she had already written I don't know but yeah a few typos that's okay though um another thing I noticed is that <laughs> she has a favorite word she gave Edward a favorite word in this book, and it's glower or glowered, which means like angry and like sullen and just, and I'm like, how, how angry are these vampires going to get? <laughs> like, literally after everything, I'm pretty sure like after everything Edward talked about when it came to Rosalie and like Rosalie's expressions towards Edward and Bella and all of that like it'll always say Rosalie glowered or like Jasper glowered or I glowered and I'm like y'all just angry all the time aren't y'all I stopped counting like after eight after I saw it eight times but I'm pretty sure it was in there plus some I don't know now we're gonna really like get into the whole I guess plot or the heart of Twilight so with Edward's point of view, we see him spiral, and I mean this man spiraled from the very first time he meets Bella to practically the last page. And I'm like, sir, he goes from being upset and hating the thoughts that the children are having of the girl, which is Bella, um, because he's like, who is this person? Like, she doesn't even seem like she all that. Just someone new. Okay, big whoop. She sounds boring. And I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> all right. And then 
he's curious because he's like, I can't read this girl's mind. What is this? I can read everyone's mind, but like, this is new. <laughs> After that, like the first time they actually like have like some contact in, uh, I think, is it biology? I don't, chemistry? That's that one science class. Edward smells Bella, you know? With a little, yeah, he does that thing, right? And then he's literally contemplating mass slaughter. <laughs> I'm like, Edward. Edward! <laughs> I'm gonna need you to not. Like, he was really like, okay. She smell good. I want her blood. Like, what do I have to do to make sure that I get it? Do I have to kill everyone in here? Every student plus the teacher and then save her for last? Or should I just, like, go for her first and then worry about what I have to clean up later? Like, and then he, he was really, he was really plotting. He was plotting, okay, to kill Bella in class. And then from there, he was like, he was telling his family, oh, I gotta leave. I gotta leave because I don't want to kill this girl. But I do want to kill her because my blood lust is so high right now. But then also, all of what we do for ourselves, I don't want it to go to waste. Like, I just don't want to ruin everything. And I'm like, Edward. This literally happened in, like, <laughs> the first, like, chapter two to four, maybe. And I'm just like, oh, he's going through it. He's going through it. And so he's telling everyone he has to leave. He left. For like a week came back and was still telling everybody he feels as though that he doesn't need to be in force and i'm like then go <laughs> like just go alice was like oh, i can't i don't really know i mean like i know you won't do anything to her but like the the, the future is changing da, 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 da. and i'm just like can y'all just like solidify something please like i know how i know how it's going to end i know how it's going to end but i'm just like I hate to see Edward really go through this spiral, spiraling phase. Like, honestly, it's, it's, it's maddening, <laughs> okay? And then in the end, of course, he falls in love with Bella and sees her and the true beauty that she has. So, it comes full circle, you know, to, I guess, I, I guess. Had to put that book down, that book is heavy. I want to talk about how Edward literally like praises Carlisle as if he's a god like he puts Carlisle on this pedestal of like being this higher being and I'm like I know he's older much older than you and I know he can live forever but that doesn't mean he he's a god Edward you know Carlisle he, he may have a like pure soul in an odd way yeah I know like he he may be that that figure but he ain't no and it's funny i was like does anyone else peep this so i went to twitter and i did some you know like searching or whatever and book twitter or whatever and i came across this tweet i'm gonna read it i came across this tweet by chaos on wheels 23 first they quoted um a part from midnight sun and then gave their commentary of course <laughs> It's an entire thread, but I'm just going to read a few tweets that, like, really stood out to me. Because, like, they were hilarious. They had me weak, okay? It says, In my head, Carlisle's kind eyes did not judge me. I knew that he would forgive me for this horrible act. Because he loved me. Because he thought I was better than I was. She put, Hello, friends. Have you heard the news of our Lord and Savior, Carlisle's Christ? <laughs> Then she quoted another part where it says, I would prove my father wrong about me. The misery of this fact hurt almost as much as the fire in my throat. And then she comments and says, Ah, oh, I see. So this is a drinking game. Take a drink every time Carlisle is used as a metaphor for God. <laughs> I was weak because it's true. And I'm just like, Edward. I'm like, Edward, I know you're like this evil being this monster that you call yourself that's like stuck in time so like when it comes to certain things beliefs you don't know where to turn to but like Carlisle not really it though 
Edward made me hate Mike Newton. Honestly, the best part of this entire book was getting to read people's minds through Edward, because that's how that works. Um, and just reading, just reading all of the mess that Mike was thinking when it came to Bella and Edward's friendship and relationship, getting her to ask into the girl's choice dance and then like prom, and it was it was a whole mess. But I was just like, wow. I don't like you, Mike. I don't like you at all. Um, which, you know, kind of goes hand in hand with Edward being jealous. Like, Edward was jealous from the very first page, okay? He didn't know it yet, but he was jealous. He was really jealous. Um, and, I mean, it was kind of weird to read that because I'm like, do you not know who you are? Do you not know what you are? Like... But I guess, you know, his human side was, you know, resurfacing a little bit. He was feeling some tings and he was just like, I don't know what this is, but I don't like it. Not only did I hate Mike, but I also hated Rosalie for most of the book. I forgot how much I hated Rosalie, but this book definitely reminded me. Like, I was, I, I honestly, I feel like every time that I watch the movies, I hate Rosalie. I, I hate her. Uh, just because of the way she treats Bella and everything. Um, and then even sometimes the way she treats Jacob. And then, like, in Brig and Dawn, like, I don't know what it is, but I kind of have, like, this soft spot for her. And I'm just like, but I don't like you, though. But I like you, but I don't like you, though. It's a love and hate thing, I guess. The other thing I liked were the parts where Edward exaggerated how accident-prone Bella is, like... I'm not going to get into detail because I don't want to spoil anything. But they were hilarious. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm not in, like, as I read it, I thought about it. I was like, okay, he kind of has a point, though. Kind of has a point. Like, Bella is an accident magnet. She draws danger. Like, the Cullens are stolers. Yes, I said stolers because that whole chapter of Grand Theft Auto, I didn't think that that's what happened. <laughs> I honestly did not think that that's what happened when they were trying to do what they were doing. To I don't like I said I don't want to get into too many details, but if you read that, if you read Midnight Sun and you remember that chapter of Grand Theft Auto, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I just thought they ran. I thought they ran. <laughs> I thought they ran to her, but nope. Nope. <laughs> so yeah, that was a bit surprising and disappointing. And they got away with it. Like, that's what made me upset even more. Like, they got away with it. Like, Grand Theft Auto, ladies and gentlemen. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. Now, with me, um, certain parts was just overly detailed. Like, there was just too much detail when it came to certain parts. And I was just not here for it. Like, the whole baseball scene. It was cool at first, but then when she started literally going into details about like every play by play i was just like okay i didn't come here to read about baseball i came here to read about sparkling vampires and love so yes um and then also uh it was another part too i just cannot remember right now um but there were parts that i enjoyed where there was detail added like in the chapter interrogations, I believe um, Edward is asking Bella about, you know, what life was like back in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, how was her mom? Like, you know, what was her role uh, growing up? Like, how was her first date like? What's her favorite color, favorite, favorite food, favorite ice cream? Stuff like that. And I was like, this was not in the original book. But I like it. I like it a lot. Especially um of the part where she describes phoenix to a t compared to forks it was beautiful i just like when it comes to stuff like that i love reading about nature scenes in literature i don't know why but it just it kind of fascinates me a little bit okay back to holding this up uh, a lot of people when we first heard about manessa coming out and we saw the cover for the book a lot of us were taken back I know I was. I was like, why is there a pomegranate on the cover? She couldn't use another fruit. I I don't know. But if you read this on page 187 is the first mention of um, the reference, the, the cover reference. And it's basically the mythological story of Hades and Persephone. I'm not going to get into, you know, what story is. 
but there's a pomegranate involved and if you want to know more about um the cover the pomegranate being a reference in the book you should check out connor's video i will link his um video in the description below um connor stompanato i really hope that i said his last name right i'm pretty sure i butchered it i watched his review video for midnight sun because he's finished the book in 11 hours shout out to him because in my eyes <laughs> um and he also uh talked about the number of times the hades and persephone um story is mentioned in the book in reference to the cover and all of that good stuff okay and of course in reference to bella and edward's relationship duh um so yeah check those out because i thoroughly enjoyed the videos another thing that i love is that we see a lot more of alice's visions through edward because as the as she's having her visions in her head edward is reading her mind so he's seeing it at the same time and then like we're reading it through his point of view so we're seeing it too and it was just amazing honestly and i'm just like i need more like i like some of the stuff shocked me because i'm like she knew from the jump he knew from the jump and he still did some of the, he still did some of the stuff that he that he knew alice saw coming but we're not gonna get into that because like i said i don't want to spoil anything but like if you know you know and i that made me upset made me so upset and just to like add this i thought it was weird but also really really cute because angela deserves so much more the little stunt that edward and emmett did um in spanish class with uh ben which who is angela's i guess love interest in twilight um was just so cute and i just thought that i was like wow edward does have a heart in a sense you know <laughs> when it comes to other people besides Bella. So I just thought that was really cute. And the way Emmett played along, it was just really cute. And it honestly, I think from that moment, I really saw how Edward and Emmett's relationship, like they're close, like they are, they are legit brothers. And it's just like the sweetest thing ever. And I do believe that Midnight Sun made me love Emmett even more. That's really all for my review. Like I said, I didn't want to give too much away, but those are just some things that I loved, some things that I, I noticed, and some things that just did not work for me. I mean, it really wasn't too much that didn't work for me because, honestly, the details that were added, um, you know, for Edward's point of view was, was just... They were great. They were great, really. I could talk about so much more, but like I said, I don't want to give spoilers away like i'm trying to work on spoiler free reviews but for some reason i still haven't completely mastered it but i think i did a really good job in this video <laughs> so moving on to the twilight tag portion of this video okay uh i like i said i don't know who the original creator is of the tag or the questions i literally just like searched on google twilight booktube tag video um, questions so the first question is what movie and book is your favorite what movie is my favorite I would definitely have to say breaking dawn simply for the the wedding and honeymoon scenes like come on those visuals were amazing except for the part the fact that they played chess for like a whole good hour <laughs> they played chess for like a whole entire hour of that movie not gonna lie you can't tell me otherwise i watched it okay i was there um so break it down is my favorite movie part one part one of course favorite book i'm just gonna go with twilight because i haven't reread any of the other books yet so i really don't know i'm just gonna go with twilight the first one so Question two, what has your experience been, been like with Twilight? Um, well, I got into the whole Twilight, Twilight Hard fandom, like, really, 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 really late. And, you know, uh, apart from the fact that people can be racist, um, it's been a great experience, you know? It's been, like, I have become a part of a... I've met friends, okay, through simply liking Twilight in school, like, in middle school and high school, mostly high school, I met some really cool folks, and, like, we bonded over the simple fact that we enjoy the Twilight books and we enjoy the movies. So, yeah, I didn't get the whole Twilight in theater experience. I did get to see Break It Dawn Part 2 in theaters, but I missed out on the whole 
um, book tour thing, Comic Con, Twilight thing, uh, Twilight Midnight premieres. No, I missed out on that. I don't have any merch. So, but other than that, I have all the books. I mean, like, every single book, down to the illustration guide and the graphic novels. I have all the books. I have the Twilight Forever DVD collection, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay. I've read some really, really, really great Twilight fan fictions. Question number three, favorite character? Hmm. Alice. Hands down. Mm. Okay, in the movies, I feel like Alice is my favorite character because the way that Ashley Green just, like, portrayed Alice was just amazing. Um, but favorite character in the book, I would probably have to say Charlie, especially after Midnight Sun, because it was just good. Like, I don't, it was good. Like I said, I don't want to, I'm not going to say anything else, but yes, Charlie is my favorite character in the books. Um, and then maybe Jacob too. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Oh gosh, okay, which leads me to my next question. Team Edward or Jacob? I used to say Team Jacob just for the simple fact that like, Taylor Lautner, you know? <laughs> but then I was like, Edward looking a little, hmm. Then I was like, okay, I'm like Bella. I'm Team Switzerland for sure. I can't choose, man. I want hot and cold, you know? <laughs> so my favorite Cullen other than Edward, well, I said Alice, um, but Apart from Ever and Alice, like, they're the perfect duo, by the way, like, and it really shows in Midnight Sun. Um, besides Ever and Alice, I would have to say Emmett. I really love Emmett, like, he's the big brother type, and I just, like, he's, he's big, but he's really, like, soft and sweet, and he may look intimidating, but, like, it's just his outward demeanor, like, on the inside, he's, like, the softest person, um, and most caring too and i just appreciate that question number six favorite song from the soundtrack or favorite soundtrack okay of course my favorite song from the twilight soundtrack would definitely have to be deco by paramore and i also like um let me sign i don't even is there like a full version of let me sign by robert pattinson because I, I haven't listened to the full song. I have not listened to the full song, and it's really, it upsets me. Um, but yeah, let me sign. Woo. Oh, and of course, Bella's Lullaby. Like, come on. It's beautiful. The melody, amazing. Um, I also love, you know, both parts of A Thousand Years. Christina Perry, she did a thing, okay? Uh, it Will Rain by Bruno Mars. Beautiful. I'm so mad it was in the credits. Like, it should have been in the movie. But anyway... <laughs> Um, of course, Flightless Bird. Like, I told myself that I want that played at my wedding. Period. So, and it's another one, too. I just cannot think of it. But the first and the first Twilight soundtrack and then both soundtracks were Breaking Dawn. Really good. Um, I just, my mind is blinking right now. Okay, question number seven. How often do you watch a Twilight movie? Oh, this is embarrassing. But, um, back in 20, I want to say 2015, I started the tradition where I would watch, if not all, at least one Twilight movie on Halloween. I'm not really into horror films. So, like, that's the stuff that I would watch. If it's not Twilight that I'm watching on Halloween, it's some old Disney, like, October, um, decom that i'm watching you know it's like once a year and depending on you know what my mood is like i'll play it just to have it on in the background or like play it and watch it if i'm like in the mood really um i i love watching it with people that haven't seen any of the movies and like i just like seeing their reactions like for the first time question number eight would you rather be a vampire or a werewolf Ooh, both both is good. I want to be a hybrid. I know there are no vampire werewolf hybrids in Twilight, but like, after watching Vampire Diaries and seeing Klaus's character, woo, I knew that I wanted to grow up and be like him. That is a boss, okay? So I want to be both. Question nine, what vampire power would you want? Ooh, um, I feel like if I had the power that Edward has, I would go insane at some point, and I would catch somebody talking smack about me, and <laughs> they would probably be shocked the way I act, because it's like, whoa, how did you know? 
Anyway, I don't think I would want that. Um, I would want to say maybe what Benjamin, the powers that Benjamin has. He can influence all four elements, um, and I really, I really enjoyed uh, seeing his character in action in Break It Down Part Two. Um, Remy Malik is just, he's an amazing actor. Basically the Avatar. I would want to be the Avatar. And watch out, okay? I'm coming for you and your career, period. Most embarrassing thing you did because of Twilight? I don't really know. I'm pretty sure, like, talked about it? Like, <laughs> people, I would constantly talk about Twilight and people would just like, shut up, Twilight is terrible, Twilight is garbage, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, y'all are haters that are probably reading Hunger Games or Harry Potter, so I don't want to hear it, okay? So if if Twilight is trash, then we're going to be trash as a collective. I don't want to hear anything at all. I honestly don't know, but, like, this is not embarrassing, but this is cringy. I remember this guy I was dating in 10th grade, my ex. Um, he knew that I was into Twilight, right? And he could kind of play the piano. And I told him, I was like, if you learn Bella's Lullaby for me and play it for me, we will be together forever, like ever and Bella. He didn't learn it, so you see how that went. <laughs> that happened, and I still don't know anyone who could play Bella's Lullaby on the piano for me, so. Uh, question 11, a part that made you cry in the book or in the movie? Well, I don't think anything made me cry in the books, um, but what really hurt was when Edward left Bella in New Moon, of course, and then after reading Midnight Sun, it makes me more upset. Um, and then also the the beginning part of the fight scene in Break It Down Part 2 where Aro takes off Carlisle's head. Let me tell y'all, in the theater, I was not ready for that. I screamed, okay? I cried, okay? And then just to see that it was a vision all along, I left that theater pissed. <laughs> And I hadn't read any of the books. So I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I was pissed. Last question. Let's go. Name all of the movies from your favorite to least favorite. Okay. Favorite to least favorite Twilight movies. We're going to go with Break of Dawn Part 1. Break of Dawn Part 2. Twilight, New Moon. No, New Moon, Twilight, then Eclipse. Eclipse really isn't a favorite never really been i think it's because of riley he really makes me hate eclipse and victoria do i skip over it sometimes when i do my twilight movie marathon yes have i watched it though of course i have i've watched it a number of times last thing i want to say before i end this video i'm not sure if you all are aware of this but we actually did lose a member of the twilight family um, just uh, two months ago, June, early June of this year, um, Gregory Tyree Boyce, the, the actor that played Tyler Crowley, he was found dead in his home along with his girlfriend. And honestly, I remember when I found out about it, it was, it was on Twitter, and everyone, you know, that n knows Twilight, that has read Twilight, watched the movies, and they are aware of who, um, Tyler's like you know the actor that played Tyler is so yeah that was that was um devastating I thoroughly enjoyed Tyler's character in the book and in the film I wish we had gotten more of Tyler's character in the film to be honest because you know with the way the Twilight book ended him showing up to Bella's house you know basically there to take her to prom I wish we had gotten that in the book I mean in the movie but sadly we did not don't forget to donate to the Quileute tribe okay all right, I did and you can too. Share the link too, you know, share the link on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, wherever. Wherever the Twi Hearts are, you share that link, okay? Um, like I said, I'm also gonna link Connor's um, Midnight Sun review video and the number of times that Hades and Persephone's story is mentioned in Midnight Sun. I enjoyed both of those videos by him, so I'm gonna link those in the description box as well. And also, um nicole from who picked this book she along with a friend of hers jen they did a live a youtube live um last wednesday 
you know, talking about Midnight Sun. And that was literally literally the day that I finished the book. And then two hours later was live. So I was I was there for that and I was happy that I finished the book like on time. Um so yeah, I'm gonna link that as well so that you all can just like rewatch the live and everything. And it was really fun, really cool. Um and yeah, I still have petitions um and websites you can donate to for you know Black Lives Matter causes change needs to happen and it's not going to happen overnight it's not going to happen tomorrow it's it's bound to take time and it's bound to take people's attention focus and like commitment into making these changes happen like we scream we want justice but it aren't willing to put in the effort for it but yeah like it starts somewhere you know um, so those are still there as well and connect with me y'all like for real i really want to meet more people in the bookish community like wherever so i have all my socials socials at the bottom of the description like all the way at the bottom so yes and if you made it all the way here okay i know this video is long and i promise it wouldn't be but i'm sorry <laughs> make sure you go to the description i have a lot for you down there but i have something special for you to do so just go down there okay just just go down there i promise just so, thank you but that's all for this video guys i hope you thoroughly enjoyed my ranting reviewing and rambling about twilight and all things forts washington and bell and edward and blah 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 so yes um if you've read midnight sun of course you know drop a few comments try not to spoil anything but yeah i just want to know i want to know and if you haven't then well, I mean, I'm glad you sat here and watched my video. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you guys for watching. I will definitely be seeing you guys in the next time. Bye, guys.